aboard today is Atmos Space Cargo's Phoenix re-entry capsule. During this mission, Atmos is looking to become the first non-governmental European entity to attempt re-entry from space. And another notable first for this mission, when Phoenix separates from Falcon 9's second stage, it will be SpaceX's first time deploying a spacecraft after a second stage deorbit burn. Here's a little bit more from our customer on the Phoenix re-entry capsule. Atmos Space Cargo was founded by four co-founders. My name is Sebastian Klaus. Uh, so I'm Maida Oliveira. My name is Christian Grimm. My name is uh, Jeffrey Hendricks. Atmos has grown to more than 40 employees as of today. We came together as a team and to create something unique and hopefully life-changing for many and enable Europe to do a giant leap ahead in space exploration. One of the biggest challenges in the space industry today is to return spacecraft or cargo from space. With Phoenix, we are developing a breakthrough technology. Phoenix uses an inflatable atmospheric decelerator for re-entry. No one has ever done this before in this scale and scope. Atmos is the first company in Europe to commercialize this kind of technology. And this is a novel concept as the design and configuration of our technology were largely undefined. While theoretically there are models in aerothermodynamics, the aerodynamic stability, the control and the structural resilience of our system still had to be verified. So we were trying to do less simulation and more real iterations. We needed to get out of the lab, out of the computer and really into the real life conditions. We refined our models, we adjusted, redesigned and tested them again and again. With our test-driven, prototype-first approach, we built a spacecraft that is now set to launch into low Earth orbit, faster than any other re-entry vehicle before. Now, Phoenix is ready for liftoff. Excited to see how this will uh, develop in the, in the future. I think this has the potential of transforming the entire space industry. If there's one team that can make it happen, it's probably this one. Our Bandwagon 3 payloads are currently awaiting liftoff of Falcon 9 in just over 5 minutes and 45 seconds. While the countdown continues, let's meet SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket designed for the reliable and safe transport of satellites, cargo, and people to outer space. Located at the very top of the rocket is the payload fairing. The fairing is a protective shell that houses all of the spacecraft, shielding them from aerodynamic heating and mechanical stress until the vehicle is outside of the Earth's atmosphere. Now, the aerodynamic shape of the fairing also contributes to Falcon 9's overall efficiency, helping to reduce drag while the vehicle accelerates through the atmosphere. Once in space, the two fairing halves separate to expose the payloads to the vacuum of space. The fairing halves will then fall back to Earth, where they are recovered by SpaceX to be refurbished and reused on future flights. Falcon 9 tanks are pressing for the start of strongback retract. There you heard confirmation, preparing for strongback retract. So this evening, uh, one, of the pay one of the fairing halves will be flying for its 15th time, and the other will be flying for its second time. And right below the fairing, we have our second stage, which houses our single Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC engine, which will take our payloads to their drop-off point. Now, below the second stage is the black carbon fiber inner stage, where the MVAC strong engine... Strongback retract has started. And good call out there for strongback retract uh, start. Now, below the second stage is the black carbon fiber inner stage, where the MVAC engine is located. The inner stage connects the two stages and houses the center pusher that allows the first and second stages to separate during flight. Moving down the vehicle, below the interstage, we have the first stage, which we tend to refer to as the booster. The first stage makes up the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle and is equipped with nine Merlin 1D or M1D engines at the base. Those nine Merlin engines do the bulk of the work to get the rocket off the ground and up to the thinner parts of Earth's atmosphere, generating more than 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Now at about two and a half minutes into flight, the first stage will separate and make its way back to Earth, attempting a land-based landing at LZ-2, not too far from the actual launch pad. And tonight's mission is the third flight for this booster. And if successful, this landing will mark SpaceX's 435th landing of an orbital class rocket. 
Now at T minus three minutes and about 15 seconds, all systems continue to be go for an on-time liftoff. At liftoff, the transporter erector, or TE, will retract away from the vehicle to clear the way for Falcon 9's ascent, which you have seen some great views of on screen. Now at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Falcon 9 uses two propellants, a refined form of kerosene called RP-1, or Rocket Propellant 1, as a fuel, and LOX, or liquid oxygen, as an oxidizer. Now at the T-minus 60 second mark, Falcon 9 will be in startup, and this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside of T minus two seconds, we'll light the M1D engines for liftoff. Stage one live slot is complete. Now the bandwagon three payloads continue to be healthy, and at this time the Falcon 9 team is fal uh, tracking no issues on the rocket. Currently, weather is green and range is ready to support a T zero of 8:48 p.m. Eastern time. Now, if stage two lock load is complete. And good call out there for stage two lock loading completion. Now, if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 8.26 p.m. Eastern Time. And as we enter the last two minutes of the countdown, let's listen in for the call outs. You may have noticed the white clouds around the vehicle, and those are completely normal and are comprised of the chilled gas in the LOX tank that is vented overboard so that we can backfill and maintain pressure in the tanks as needed. Now coming up next at the T-1 minute mark, Falcon 9 will be in startup, meaning the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown, and then just inside of T-2 seconds, Falcon 9 will light the M1D engines for liftoff. Nine is in startup. Now with that confirmation, and next up the launch director will give their final poll for launch, so let's listen in. Launch director, go for launch. And at T minus 40 seconds, all systems are go for Falcon 9's launch of Bandwagon 3, so let's listen in to the final countdown. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Engines full power and lift off. Go Falcon, go Bandwagon 3. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Now at the T plus 32 second uh, moment, we Falcon 9 has lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. We are currently throttling down to prepare for max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic stress. Power and telemetry nominal. On the vehicle, good call out there for power and telem nominal. You can monitor the vehicle's telemetry in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Vehicle is supersonic. Max Q. And there we heard that call out for Max Q. Now coming up shortly, we're going to have several events happening in quick succession. First is Miko or main and back chill. Good call out there. First will be Miko or main engine cutoff, where all nine Merlin engines will shut down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Following this, the Falcon 9 first stage will then perform a flip maneuver concurrently with the MVAC engine on the second stage starting up. 
Then we'll see the start of the boost back burn on the Falcon 9 first stage, followed by fairing separation. So keep an eye out for all of these events happening in about 30 seconds from now. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boot back startup. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we heard those events that happened back to back, which again were main engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, the start of the boost back burn on the first stage, and fairing separation. Now we are currently awaiting the conclusion of the boost back burn, which will properly orient the first stage for re entry into the atmosphere. And the second stage is. Uh, firing, which you can monitor in the lower right-hand corner of your stage screen. Stage one boost back shutdown. There's a confirmation of first stage boost back shutdown. So the next milestone coming up is entry burn on our first stage, scheduled to occur around the T plus six minute and 30 second mark. Now that boost back burn is complete, Falcon 9 will perform two more burns in order to land. The first of the two burns is entry burn to slow itself down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. You can think of this as similar to pumping the brakes on your car. And without this burn, we'd only be using the atmospheric drag alone to slow down Falcon 9, which adds extra stresses onto the rocket. A single Merlin 1D engine will relight for this particular entry burn. Following the entry burn, the booster will go through its final burn, the landing burn, which should slow the vehicle down even more for a successful land landing. Now, as you can make out on the screen there, Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins, which are positioned near the top of the first stage, and those help steer the first stage as it returns back to Earth. You may also notice the white puffs coming off of Falcon 9, and that comes from cold nitrogen gas, which helps with attitude control. These help to make small adjustments as Falcon 9 heads back to Earth. Now, when Falcon 9 fires up the center M1D engine for re-entry, the vehicle will be flying through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. And you'll see these marks across the flight-proven Falcon 9 first stage fleet. Now the M1D engines on the first stage and the MVAC engine on Falcon 9's second stage are each optimized to perform in their unique operating environments. An M1D engine generates approximately 190,000 pounds of thrust compared to the MVAC engine, which can generate a little bit over 220,000 pounds. The MVAC nozzle extension, which you've seen in the views this evening, is also significantly taller with a larger diameter compared to the M1D engine for optimal performance in a vacuum environment. Now coming up in about 30 seconds from now, we should be hearing that call out for the Falcon 9 first stage entry burn. As a reminder, this booster will be performing this burn for its third time this evening. Stage 2 FTS has saved. And good call out there. This booster previously supported the O3B Empower E mission and the NASA Crew 10 mission. And there's confirmation of that stage 1 entry burn startup. This burn will last about 20 seconds.
stage one if you're going to shut down. And that concludes our entry burn. So the first stage has one more burn left to prep for landing. As mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to recover this booster, targeting a landing at landing zone two, which is not far from our launch pad. Now the Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs, which are made of a carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb mesh. And these are placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket and will deploy just prior to touchdown of the booster. Now you may notice the number three in today's mission name, indicating that this mission is our- Stage one, FTS is saved. This mission is our third dedicated rideshare mission to a mid-inclination orbit. Rideshare significantly increases access to space for small satellite operators around the world. Stage one landing burn. Now this is the beginning of Falcon 9's final burn, the landing burn. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there we have it, another successful first stage landing at landing zone two, making the third landing for this specific booster in SpaceX's 435th landing of an orbital class rocket. Now, as that booster descended, you may have also seen the booster that previously supported our CRS-32 mission last night. And with confirmation of booster landing, that will be bringing to, we'll be bringing today's webcast to a close. For those interested in learning more about today's payloads and deployments, head over to our customers' websites for more information. To stay up to date with all of our missions, check out spacex.com forward slash launches for schedules. We'd also like to thank all of our Rideshare customers for entrusting us with their spacecraft today. And as always, a big thank you to the Range and the FAA for their ongoing support. That will do it for us here at SpaceX Hawthorne. Good night, everyone, and thank you for tuning in.